Uh, one, one thing before we get to the calls. I've always wanted to know this, and you know, I I never served. I I, I did what most guys do. You you talk to recruiters. I I, I was yeah. like, well, radio is one of those things. I thought at, in high school, I'm going to have to hit the ground running. And at one point, when I was 29 years old, I was doing what's called adventure racing. It was oh yeah, that's cool. You know, and I mm. thought, and I I got. I was sick and tired of doing radio, and I was friends. I was drinking buddies with all the recruiters, Army, Marine Corps, wherever, you know, and when I was living in Hartford. And finally, I said to one of them, I said, what do you think about me? What do you think about me joining? And my, one of my friends was like, I'd love to put you on my board. College educated. He's like, you do this adventure racing thing. He's like, he's like, you're good at radio. Yeah. And I, I was at the time sick of radio. I'm not trying to act, I'm not trying to relate to anything. Well, but, but it was funny. I talked to a guy who was one of the recruiters who was Rangers. And the radio station didn't take it very seriously that I was considering leaving, and they sent the fax over from the recruiting station with the with the uh, Soldiers and Sailors Act saying, if he goes reserve, you have to respect his job. Right. And this guy shows up in uniform with a tab to sit down and talk to me, and it was like, he was telling me all kinds of crazy stuff about Ranger School. He's like, yeah, he's, he'll, 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 uh, you know, we call it Tabasco Ranger Eye Drops. And I'm like, Ranger <laughs> Eye Drops? When you look back at these guys who are in the, you know, you look now, we have modern nutrition, workout. You know, this Gatorade. You know, high school football programs have more advanced training science, training, yeah. training, training equipment than than the military probably had in the 1930s and 40s. I mean, you you know, they were doing. You look at old videos, squat jacks. thrust, yeah, jumping yeah. jacks. You know, they were taking their rifles. How different physically is the training, or is it? You know, just like you look at old football players, they bloodied their noses. There were no there were no masks back in the day. You charged the guy, you hit him right. in the. What was, did they expect less? Was training less? Was the physical stuff less then? Because there weren't these advanced, what was it like? Was it, was it just that much harder and that generation just had that much more grit? Well, to th- I'm going to get to that point, but I want to get to the other point too that, that just made me think of And we'll suit. take calls in just a second. Yeah, I know we're going to take calls. And here, people love warriors, so yeah. we'll, we'll get to people who, who people like, say, watch Terry Shepard, you suck. Hey, you know something else too, Andrew, and you got to know this. You don't have to have been in the military to be a patriotic guy. And, you know, most of my friends have never been in the military, but every one of them, to be my friend, really has to be a patriotic person. And that doesn't mean waving a flag and yelling. It's really believing in what we are and willing to do something about it. Hey, man, you're fighting. The, I, as I said, but when I was talking, I, to I you carry get, this everywhere I go. I, it's, it's in the wow. studio with me every day, the Constitution. That's your, that's your weapon, brother. I've heard you use it. And by the way, it's funny. When you've used the Constitution against some of the people who have called you, that weapon that you have, they cannot defend oh, you. But let's go back to anyway. the, back to the training. But so it's, yeah, man, you don't have to be. I, I hear people do that a lot on radio hosts. They make these little snarky inferences that oh, well, you don't know because you weren't in the military. Shut up. You don't. You don't have to be in the military to know that. And I know that, and all the other guys do. As far as the training goes, yeah, you know, when I was in the 82nd, we had this old every week, every year rather. There's a thing called All American Week where all these old paratroopers come, and of course. We're starting to lose those guys now as they get older. And they're a national treasure. They're a national treasure. And one of them came to, I was in a, I was in a recon platoon. One of them came to kind of visit us and watch some of our training. And, and, and uh, he was like, wow, you guys are better than we ever were. And I looked at him. I said, sir, you didn't have Gore-Tex. You didn't have MRE. Under Armour. You didn't have any of the kind of stuff that we had. And you still got it done. And he was like, ah, you know, he kind of blew it off. I think that the training back then for like World War, actually the guys got trained a lot less in World War II, because think about it, they were drafted. They had basically weeks to get these cats on the front line. So it was very, very, it wasn't nearly as detailed because it wasn't really a professional army. It was a, hey, a conscript army. Now we do, you're right, we have a, I mean, you should, I mean, all the stuff we do, the science, not even, the, not only the gadgets and the technology, which, I'm, which I suck at, you know, I, I only know, know what I have to use, but the training science has taken it a, a long way as far as what we can do, but the mental, you're right about that. The, the mental set of those guys, I don't know. I think most of those guys could take the average guy walking down the street today because yeah. I just think they're just, they were just harder people. It was saltier. They were saltier. saltier. They had, it was, life was just tougher, man. All right, let's get some calls here. Let's see. Uh, Robbie, Kentucky. You're on the Will Count Majority with Terry Shepard from the History Channel. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Terry. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's great to talk to you. I've really enjoyed the show. I served with fifth group in Iraq in All right. 2004, and I lost uh, both my legs to a roadside bomb, so I ended up medically retiring, but I've always been a big military history buff, and I've caught your show over the last season and had a couple of questions and yeah, shoot, man. about it. I really enjoyed the uh, episode in Malta. I just thought that yeah. was incredible, you know, imagining 
you know, what those guys had to go through there. And, and I actually uh, pushed, just so you know, too, I pushed for that episode. That's a, that's a, a, an aspect of history that a lot of people don't know. That one, there was a couple of uh, the shows were on my recommendation, and that was one of them. So, yeah, I was really, really happy to tell that story. It, it was incredible. And the, uh, the questions were, are you getting picked up for another season? And is there going to be like a season one DVD that's coming out? Okay, here's what I know so far. There is going to be a season one DVD set, which is which cracks me up that I'd actually be on a DVD box. I will, I will, I will say this, brother. They're not going. Uh, history is not going to renew the show in its current incarnation for another season. And I, I, yeah, I was disappointed. I thought we had more, uh, more to do. But there's some other projects coming up. And uh, if you go to like, uh, if you go to Facebook and look up Warriors, there's an official page, man. I'll keep you posted, bro. You, you get in touch with me. And uh, write me a letter, and I'd love to stay in touch with you. And, and hey, man, God bless you, man. God bless you. Well, well, same to you, and thanks for your service. Thanks for the show. We really enjoyed it. And I was with Fifth Group, actually. When I went, my last tour in Iraq, we were piggybacked with Fifth Group, so I got a lot of great feeling for them. Well, we really appreciate it. Thanks. All right, All right. man. Thanks for the call. I had an idiotic idea. for Maybe I should, Rizzuto, present my, my TV show idea, since he says they're not getting picked up. Pitch it, Will Cal. Let's I, hear I it. I had an idea to gather troops... To, you know that they, they, they do like they have hosted movies like they have like the horror movies or date night movies. <laughs> I would love to see a bunch of Rangers watching Black Hawk Down yeah, and be... get their comments on it. Like on a Friday night show, Saving Private Ryan with people who are in the first right who, who, who are actually who, on who, on who the beach actually, who are actually no not maybe not the old guys but the guys who are serving now. Like you know, remember Charlie Sheen's Navy Seals? I, I have a Please. feeling yeah. that that is <laughs> that that was slightly that there was some slight license taking with that movie. I would love to see that movie hosted with a host watching it with Navy SEALs and getting their commentary. That's a great watching idea. Watching old John Wayne movies. Yeah, man. You know, watching maybe Platoon or uh, any of those movies with the troops, with a host like you, gathering guys who are in the actual units now to watch the movies so you can get their commentary. Like, no, that's not real. That's really cool. Or, gee, I wish that happened when I was there. <laughs> I just, that was my idea I don't for know. Rizzuto, I think that's genius. You I like that, that one? Yeah, and whether you have me hosting it or not, that I would watch that. Well, you, know? you should host it. <laughs> I just want to watch it. It's a great it. idea, man. Uh, let's see. Who do we have here? Uh, Josh, L.A., go ahead. Hey, Andrew. Um, Terry Hula. Hey, Hula. Right What's up, Josh? Uh, I was uh, formerly 16th MPs, 82nd Airborne. All right, man. And, uh, just want to tell you, make it fast. Love your show. Wish it was being picked up for another season. Um, just really, you know, happy finally there was a network out there that was willing to actually show long history of the warrior spirit and um just thank you however you got to do it buddy i'm glad you dug it brother all the best all right thanks for the call one eight six six ninety five patriot ed michigan go ahead hi terry uh just wanted to say thanks for bringing up brad boulevard and rick's lounge <laughs> hey man listen i know ed that uh you only know about it through somebody else you never experienced well, it. it's when i worked at k's body shop <laughs> in fort walton i i say that on the air i get air force guys who call me yes. yeah okay yeah i heard about that place so you've been there then huh man Oh yeah, yeah. It was. It I'm, was not, I'm not going to judge. <laughs> it was a different time. It was a. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was great. Exactly. Well, exactly. I have a buddy in Ohio that I'm going to see tomorrow from the military. We were in the first Gulf War together, and uh, I had to call him as soon as you mentioned. It. I was like, "Dude, you got to check out what I just heard." And he was. <laughs> he laughed. I was actually. I fought in the Gulf War with the 82nd. That was my first. Uh, first. I, we joke around, call it the big one. That was the first one I was in. Was the Gulf with the 82nd. So right on, man. I, I tell people today that the Gulf, the Gulf War that I was in is nothing compared to what the Gulf War they're in today. You no, know? you're right. No, no, no. This my, one is this. I've been over on this one too. This one's a lot worse. Yeah, my my, you know, my hats off to all of them, and, and God bless them all for keeping us safe. You yeah, too, right on. That goes, you know. Yeah, thanks, so, man. All right, thanks for the memories. I appreciate it. Hey, bro, nice talking to you, man. Stay safe. Right, you too. All, all right, right, thanks for the call. One eight six six ninety five Patriot. Let's see who do we have here. Uh, Mike, Ohio. Go ahead. Yeah, hello? Yeah, Yeah. hey, Mike, what's up? Yeah, I was just wondering, have you ever thought about doing anything with Marcus Luttrell? You know, the SEAL Team member, SEAL Team yep. 10? I sure do. He's I, been on the show a, with Vets I, for I, I know. I know, who, uh, I know exactly who he is. I read the book, Lone Survivor. He's a, yeah, I, I that, did too, whatever, and it's probably one of the best books I've ever yeah. read. I mean, it actually brought a tear to my eye. I usually don't. That usually doesn't happen to me. Well, that cat that and, cat and, uh, and his boys I are... I had a tough time reading that with some of his story, you know, yeah. with a uh, story. Well, those guys are. Uh, hey, listen, Marcus Luttrell and his boys who didn't come back. I mean, those are those are real American heroes. I, I mean, I kind of 
not to segue into something, but some of the coverage of some of the events uh, going on today. Man, everybody should know the names of some of those guys. And uh, he told the story on this show. He he and uh, and uh, David Alavia, who wrote House to House, were both on the show together. And to nice. listen to them tell the stories from the book in their own words, that was uh, that was crazy. Yeah, I'd love to meet him and shake his hand. Yeah, I bet, uh, he's a, he's a he's a tough dude, man. God bless him. Well, we're running out of time in the program. In the program, thanks for the call. I got to take this one last call. I'm just going to show it to you before I go to it. So, do, do you want me to take Break, that call? Put put Deborah on. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take this call. This this is how you close out a Friday program on a Friday. Deborah, Indiana, go ahead. Hey guys. Hi, Deborah. Don't even tell me I met you. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, twenty eight years ago, I used. What's to that Alan Jackson it. song about waking up being married? Yep. So <laughs> tw- twenty eight years ago, you used to dance at Rick's. Yes, I did. We had a great time. I don't care how. They always said it was rough, but I had fun. No, that place was crazy, crazy yeah. GI place. The two of you are probably yeah. bringing back memories <laughs> for other people who probably forgot them or don't want to remember them right now. Yeah. <laughs> but it was great. Thanks, guys. I love Warriors. I love Wilkow. I right on. Day, man. Cool. All Thank right. you. I'm glad you called. Thank you. Thank you very Bye, much for the call. Now, you want to talk about your charity work real quick? Yeah, perfect, man. Hey, if, if you get, people get a chance, just go to um, uh, www.specialops.org, and that's the, that's the Special uh, Operations Warrior Foundation. That's the charity I had actually for my show, and uh, that's, that's the one that I'm, I'm with and I do things with now, specialops.org. And uh, actually, I'm riding my Harley out in a few days to go meet my boys who are coming back from Afghanistan. I didn't go because I got the TV series. My commander said, hey, man, go knock the TV series out of the park. So I'm meeting those guys, and we're riding in, and uh, uh, Saturday morning, uh, we're going to have a flag-raising ceremony at the World Trade Center for the five guys that the task force lost over there on this tour. So if you go to specialops.org and look under the Freedom Bike Ride, that's there. And yeah, they're, they're, it's a great charity. It's, it's everything go, Pretty much everything they get goes towards scholarships of, of, of guys who are, are killed in the special operations community. That's my charity. That's my community. But there's lots of other good ones, too. So. I, I, you know, we're wrapping this up. We're probably, yeah. what, we have about a minute left? A minute left? All right, just to, to, to wrap this up, yeah. I actually, and we'll talk off air. Yeah. I, I, I email back and forth with Bob Golden from GreenBeret.net and their organization uh, outs fake special operations guys who you know sell themselves to be grand marshals or to give speeches yeah and uh he he was a listener of the program when i was on terrestrial and i i keep track of him but uh he rides a motorcycle and he was a vietnam era green beret and him and his guys man if if somebody shows up claiming you know special special forces (laughs) you know and you email that they're like they're like the a team you know they're like they'll get on there they'll they'll find out they'll find out and they will i mean he's got a, a wall of shame up there that's people, called the wall of shame. Yeah, yeah, he's got a wall of shame up on his website of people who have faked their credentials to to make money or to uh, get and attention. We're, we're out of time here. Sean Hanley's up next. Then Mark Levin. Have a great weekend. We're Thanks. right there wrong. Terry Shea, he'll be back. He'll be back. We're right there wrong. End of story. XM America right one sixty six series Patriot one forty four. Thanks guys.